I'd like to yield to my friend and colleague from Texas, Mr. Henseling, for a few observations. I thank the gentleman for yielding. I certainly thank him for his leadership on what is clearly the single most important issue, a fiscal issue facing the nation. Uh, and again, it's not just myself saying that. If anyone in this committee hearing room attended the same committee hearings I did, you've heard it from the General Accountability Office. You've heard it from the Office of Management and Budget. You've heard it from the Congressional Budget Office. If you introduce a budget that is completely silent as to the number one fiscal challenge of the nation, there is a conspiracy of silence. And why, why this would be done, I do not know. Uh, the gentleman from Alabama was kind enough to mention my children. Uh, they get to meet from time to time when they all come up to Washington. And I know everybody in this room, almost everybody in this room, I assume, either has children or grandchildren. Uh, and I know that each and every member loves them dearly. Uh, but I'm not sure they love mine. Or they certainly view the future very differently than I do. I mean, I sit here and I look at the testimony we've received from the chairman of the Federal Reserve, without early and meaningful action to address the rapid growth of entitlements, the U.S. economy could be seriously weakened with future generations bearing much of the cost. Uh, GAO, the rising cost of government entitlements are a fiscal cancer that threatens catastrophic consequences for our country and could bankrupt America, and yet the majority presents us a budget that essentially is a fiscal cancer threatening catastrophic consequences for our country. Silent. Silent as to the issue of entitlement reforms. I mean, we've already heard the numbers. There's $53 trillion, a burden of roughly $180,000 for every man, woman, and child in the United States, two of those children being mine. Family of four like mine, we're already in hock, $720,000. Dollars, But every year, every year that the majority puts off any kind of entitlement reform, according to the Comptroller General, in Medicare and Social Security alone, an extra $2 trillion, $2 trillion added to these unfunded obligations. And again, I invite the majority to tell me, you're always decrying the federal debt. If you don't believe these are obligations of the federal government to future generations to pay for Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid, please, please on your time, rise up and enlighten us that you do not consider them obligations. If you consider them obligations, then I assume they must be paid for. You don't want to put it on the credit card, so therefore you want to pay cash. Well, if you pay cash every year you put it off, an extra $8,333 per year for each one of our constituents. So I guess that means that you're going to raise taxes if you won't do entitlement reform, an extra $8,333 per year to pay for the $2 trillion that you're postponing. Well, I can tell you what, uh, that, that kind of money could send a whole lot of folks for a four-year education at Texas A&M University and pay an average mortgage for almost two years. It would pay, it's enough to pay for gasoline for the family to get to and from work every day for almost 20 years. And so, again, the cost of doing nothing uh, is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And if I could, could we pull up chart number 11, please? I know the majority continues to decry tax relief that happened in 01 and 03, but it's an inconvenient fact that more tax revenue came in once that tax relief was proposed. But even assuming it was a complete waste and all we're doing is throwing money into a hole, the federal government with unreformed entitlement spending left on automatic pilot before you start adding on all the new entitlement programs that you already passed in the House in the last 13, 14 months, it's clear that spending drives it. Even if the tax relief did no good whatsoever, that hardly makes a dent in the spending curve. We're facing a very tragic fiscal fork in the road for future generations. Either, number one, you're going to double their taxes. And again, it's not me saying that. Check the testimony that you've heard. 
Either you're going to double taxes on them, or you're going to leave them a federal government that consists of almost nothing but Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, which will take up roughly 80 percent of all federal revenues. We always hear talk about the least of these. The least of these are those who cannot vote and have not been born, and we need to show respect to future generations. I yield back. Who claims the time in opposition? Recognize.